And I'm so, so, so happy to be in conversation with uh, a dear friend, a colleague I have uh, a lot of esteem for, and I have also the luck to say that I had a lot of uh, work experiences with. And this person is uh, Marinella Senatore. Uh, Hello, everybody. Thank you, Matteo. So while we were preparing for this conversation, we decided uh, not to focus on a specific work, but rather to really uh, delve into the practice of Marinella, because the whole practice of Marinella is about uh, the society and is about uh, a multiplicity of readings of society. The fact that Marinella has really, from the beginning, understood that she wanted to untangle uh, in a very demodernizing way, I would say, to quote uh, Charles Esch and something that uh, many people are busy with demodernizing in, in a sense that to really rethink the idea of culture. Uh, because we inherited an idea of culture that was uh, divided between uh, high culture, low culture, vernacular, intellectual. And for Marinella, from the get go, from the beginning, there was always this idea culture is uh, for everybody, is by everybody, exactly. and this should be reflected uh, in everything she does. And this is something that you can consistently observe in all her works, really working uh, from uh, the etoile, uh, from the ballet dance, that is the most conservative idea we have of culture, to the grassroots organization dealing with culture as a way to engage uh, this disfranchised components of the community. Right? So maybe let's take it from the beginning, Visible and Marinella. The beginning of the relationship with Marinella and Visible started in 2011, the very first edition of the award. And Marinella was shortlisted with a project that uh, is, uh, I think, very dear to her. And it was called the Gemmin Drama Project. Yeah. Do you want to tell us what it was about? Yes, yeah, sure. And the Gemin Drama Project was actually a sort of uh, homage to Tim Rollins, who was very dear artist uh, for me and very great maestro, master point of reference. Back to that time, I was in New York living and I was extremely interested by uh, the culture that is not considered the major one that is not that kind of uh, cultural proposal that you can find so easily in institution. So at that time I went to Bronx and, um, and uh, Harlem uh, districts and I worked with a lot of um, uh, community, different communities. So we had um, prominently two communities, the African-American one and the Hispanic on the other side. So a melting pot of culture, conflict, social uh, diversities, but also a great, great moment of encouraging a real engagement. It wasn't easy, but it was fantastic. And you, you could really understand the people in a way that is maybe not so easy to communicate but picking their uh, favorite reference or even just imagining the different way to narrate histories, you could have a portrait in front of you of the a community and how many variation a community you can find. So it was pretty amazing, actually. It was pretty amazing. But this is my feeling in front of every uh, project. I worked since 2006 so far with over 6 million of people around the world, over 23 countries. I don't know how many languages already. So 6 million of people could seem a very big number and in, in fact it is. But on the other hand, it portrays only the need and the, the new request that the public is providing us. We wanna be more active and uh, I think uh, it's very important that you mentioned these numbers that can be very impressive, very frightening sometimes. But it also shows the long term activity that you have uh, done through several projects. And every time, you know, it's also the different temporalities of like building a project. It doesn't mean that you 
are only doing a project for the sake of the final outcome, which is also important to stress, but it's really every time a process and the process can take uh, sometimes months, sometimes even years. And in this time, so many people get in touch with the project in different forms. Sometimes it's uh, the audition, sometimes it's an open call, other times it's going and looking for specific uh, communities, but every time it's really like a long term research for every project uh, that it's about really uh, getting uh, as many people as possible involved. And another thing that is important to say is that uh, the work starts the moment you start to meet these people. Exactly. Right? That's what I always say. And uh, thank you for reminding me that even it's scary the, the number at the end, there are lives behind every single person. And maybe this is one of the fortunate aspect of this work, my practice is based on individuals and their emancipation and empowerment. So the concept of a very blurry mass of people is not part of, of uh, the game. Actually, the, I have a very strictly rules for myself when I approach different community or I'm invited to approach different community and I will be extremely flexible in every aspect of the production. So my methodology won't be fixed, won't be a rule, but I will shape and reshape the way to work, to communicate, to highlight the common efforts and the common goods that we share uh, with the people and every time accordingly with their time, not mine. So when people ask me how many people can be engaged, how many people can find a way also to overcome conflicts or difference or ideas, etc. Well, conflicts are embraced. Different perspectives are embraced. What is not embraced is the, um, the using of people as a tool and the participation not as a as a um, concept, but as a way simply to, to have an outcome that is comfortable with you and your dreams and fulfill your ideas. Uh, if people just um, perceive that there is this intent, you don't have <laughs> you don't have a work, you don't have a project to carry on. And of course, this starts with a very serious uh, phase of mapping the field. I have to meet people, I have to leave a time in that in that community, I have to share time. Um, I have to very discreetly enter uh, as much as people allow me to enter in their routine, in their daily life. And when the build, the, the, the trust is built, then we can start. So I'm interested about the history of the place and a lot of contents related to the history of the place. But at the end of the day, what is important for me is the street. That leads me to show some uh, other work that uh, of yours that I had the, 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 the luck to really share with you, which is uh, uh, a dream, I would say, that is called the Modica Street Musical, where you dreamt one day of like having the whole city of Modica in Sicily to join uh, forces together and to imagine all together what would it mean to do a musical together. And, and already starting from the idea that you just mentioned, so of what people are bringing is the material with which you're working. And in fact, one, I remember one of the first uh, uh, ideas that you brought to the table when we first started meeting people was, okay, this musical is gonna have a dramaturgy, but this dramaturgy is not coming from me, it's coming from the people. So people will come and sh tell me what they would like to perform. And this will be the material with which all together we can build uh, a dramaturgy and this was like uh, over all, I mean almost two years from the beginning till the final yeah. realization yeah. but what maybe it's important to say what it means to work with the whole city with the whole village to build a, an artwork together the, the very beautiful aspect of this is that you empower the entire city that you uh, allow everybody to take part and that everybody felt comfortable. This was my success, the, to have built a platform together with you, by the way, where people could express and fail also. This um, deceleration, the 
uh, the ecology of affection I used to mention very often because I like very much this definition, ecology of affection, deceleration, the possibility of failure, the, the comfort zone, the safe zone that a creative space can, creative process can, can build. These are all the things that I try to offer. And when you see that everybody in the city, starting from their own possibility, taxi driver, uh, band, amateur band, the seamstresses, um, makeup make artists, makeup uh, uh, school student, etc. When ev literally everybody, even not actively participating in the performative moments, they, they feel that this project belongs to them. People had this social stage, which is the street. And for me, this is a very political uh, and... Uh, social uh, value to have the street as a, as a stage and they retook their street and their city and they reshaped in a different way working with people that maybe they know but they didn't know they could live this experience in this, this way you may in in a small town you can imagine that you know your neighbors you can imagine that you know everybody but maybe you perceive them in a certain way then when it comes to uh, creative process when you are allowed also to challenge yourself to stretch your competences to share the skills that maybe your friends don't know you have well in this moment you are generating a big empowerment and i think also this was uh, very much embedded with uh, your choice of the title because uh, this musical had uh, three acts and uh, it was uh, the the present the past and the possible so you decided to substitute the idea of the future with the possible because exactly the act of putting people together, doing something that they do in a normal daily life as something that they do perhaps as a pastime, as a passion, as yeah. a, you know, but understanding that by joining these passions together, they could imagine a different use of the city. They could imagine a different way of getting together, a different way in which what they are passionate about could be shared with so many other people. That really created a, another imagination for them to think what the city is for them, what their connections are. And, and how uh, they see themselves and how they look at the others in relation with the city and with their own body because also the presence of the body it's something that i always try to 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 remark because it's very important when with your body you take the street and your body perform in a different way from the daily life so uh, your existence assume assumes a sort of value that you never felt before uh, you reshape your city, reshaping your city, by reshaping your city, you rethink about your role in this uh, environment and, and then consequently you look at the others in a different way. Now we cannot control the result of all this process and we don't have to, but we can feel inside that we are generating an activation. But you managed to really start from this ecology of affection, of affects, that you, that you understand, that you studied, that you've been in touch with, and understanding these needs from the community, from the different uh, individuals you met, you really like managed to make that the starting point of your work and really start from there to develop something together. That's why we, before we were saying that the work starts with the first meeting, because yeah. the work is also different publics. The first public is the participant. The, f the first, the participant is not just somebody that cater something for your work but this you know as you were saying somebody that activates the work and therefore is the first uh, uh, public of the work itself and also starting from this idea of really reshuffling the categories through which we conceive an artwork i also found very fascinating uh, uh, always the idea that which that you have of repurposing repurposing the role of performance and the role of gestures because, you know, in many of your works, you have this idea of looking at uh, the, the history of performance uh, with all the respect and admiration that you have, of course, for yes. bodies, uh, you know, it's also part uh, of your uh, studies and your work. But it's always like for you understanding 
what was socially and politically relevant behind those gestures and try to reactivate this kind of legacy, this kind of history. You, you have this project that also we, we, we did together as well of memory and celebrate protest forms, memory and celebration. Yes. Do you want to say what it means this title for you? Of course. I started as activist very soon. I was an adolescent actually when I started and I worked with very great group that taught me a lot about life, rights and the way to resist using art as a great tool for that. And I created this format, uh, protest forms, memory and celebration in order to remember what was done and to rethink what would have been possible to do. The legacy is something very important. In this way, I am very close to African-American community when they talk about the ancestor and they talk about the people that were there before them and why we are here because people were here before us. I think that this is something that we should keep in mind very clearly for the future. But as you said, I don't like to talk about future, but about possibilities. And activism and art are, of course, my possibilities, or the ones that I choose for me, that I felt, uh, according with my personality, something that I could do. And so instead of telling just the story of something that happened in the past, I wanted to see how this past could activate and generate new proposition. But when we try to reconstruct and retell the story of the activism in New York from the 60s so far, uh, with a special focus on 70s, uh, and then we build a new way to, uh, to, to look at activism and protest and way of resistance, um, of course, we make an homage to the, to the past and the people that were here before us, but we're also trying to find a different way to communicate, to take the street, to reorganize forces. When Black Lives Matter work with us, they don't make a speech, they make Black brilliance, they use the language of a performance. This is very important for me to highlight because we can take from art a lot of instances, but also a lot of tools in order to create and generate demonstration. These languages, these tools can be great for operating a new transformation or for also the idea of activism. So we have LGBTQI communities making incredible projects with using the body or using the sound or using uh, the voice. Um, then we have a Black Lives Matter using performance and making uh, spoken words and the slam poetry. So all these things are extremely fruitful, but they come, it's obviously they come from art. So everywhere uh, we can uh, trace like fil rouge among things. And this is the legacy. And also like, uh, just to, to tell one thing that in this work, they, because now we've seen just few glimpses of it, but you really managed to put together in a, quite uh, uh, coherent and uh, empowering way, really all the things you've been mentioning. So you had like uh, the activists from Black Lives Matter performing their chants that they usually like they, they say in the street next to uh, guy boys that uh, were wrestling and for them they're part of a wrestling club as a way of being out of the streets out of criminal activities to and take then, the, 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 yeah the guys into a safe place and teaching exactly. them and next to them there was martha graham uh, student cool. yeah but again to put all these things in one line means also to repurpose the political gesture that the performative uh, work of Martha Graham did in a specific time and moment and to reconnect it into a history of uh, resistance of solidarity across uh, different bodies of work and all sometimes you know juxtaposing this with poetry as a tool that can really uh, make us look at things differently, re reorganize uh, concepts, re rethink at the words we are using. So this was really brilliantly uh, put the together. The of spoken words, remember with his poets, yes. poets, yes. So uh, performing uh, slam poetry in so many different languages and the force and the energy of advocates for so many different topics. This is something that is um, is permanently in development, I guess. For me, common good is when we 
rise together. We grow together. So we, I always say we rise by lifting others. No, it's a sentence of mine that is, is everywhere uh, in my installation or is in, in a lot of banners or other props that we create together with the people. And uh, I saw these sentences in, um, during uh, riots in the street and it was written on a t-shirt of one of the protesters. And I found this incredible. It's exactly what I believe in. We rise by lifting others. And when we create with others something starting from the, the ground and growing together, everybody at the same level and we, we grow together, when we, when we can make it, then we are creating something that is a good for everyone and the common good, something that other people can have in their hands and can change and can use from the, for their purposes. It's, it's very, very uh, crucial now for me. So I'm working very much on this, trying to make this platform as something that can be used even without me, even without the art. So we draw the artist is for me something interesting. <laughs> so we draw the presence, the absence of the director, not this, or the feminist instant about the disappearance of the artist. So all these topics are, in my opinion, very crucial. So uh, decelerate, disappear, withdraw yourself, let people use what you activated. These are all topics I'm facing right now. What we just saw now were pictures from the School of Narrative Dance in Venice, uh, together with the Venice Biennial and with the Creative Time. And it was uh, an incredible uh, experience as well. And even, you know, there, for instance, uh, we really witnessed also your ability to weave together different issues. For instance, I remember at that time there was a huge uh, outcry, rightly so, because they were banning, the, the mayor was banning books. Uh, from uh, uh, from being uh, distributed in schools because they had uh, uh, topics related to gay families, so non-traditional families. And you managed to bring it together in a, in, a, in a performance that was celebrating the school uh, and therefore the idea of the gestures of, of the narrative of single people that could become protagonists of a uh, the story of people that could become protagonists thanks to gestures, thanks to performance, thanks to dance. But you managed to bring this uh, topic in and really make it uh, become uh, uh, visible to so many people at, at one time. So uh, but that's but the perfect example, Matteo, of what I was trying to explain before. People led us to this narration because before to jump into Venice at that time, we knew about this story, but we didn't know about all the people that were trying to resist to this. It was fantastic that they addressed it to us this urgency. So this is the kind of narrative that you cannot preconceive. You must live and you must experience with the people. Say that um, you really worked from the most grassroots situation, like for instance, working in Modica with local people that then joined other performances in Rome and so on, and two top level museums, biennials, uh, you're now preparing for the Sao Paulo Biennial, you've done uh, uh, so many different yes, biennials, yes. Venice, uh, I mean, we, we don't have to mention, but, and also what I find very interesting now, uh, also because you are really letting your work and, and what you believe in becoming also part of a uh, more mainstream narrations, like for instance, when you collaborated with Dior in this summer, and it was amazing to see uh, all the repertoire that came from your research on feminist theory becoming part of the public space uh, in Lecce. So maybe if you want to give the last comment on uh, what you, how, what it felt for you to also bring your research to such a larger public, sometimes a public that you were not able to meet as you usually do, but the public that certainly saw your work uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in mainstream media, no? It was exactly the reason why I accepted that commission, because I wanted to reach out 
so many people and I, you know, I don't believe in boundaries and I like the contamination, the mix, the melting pot. I like everything that can portray the reality and, and transform something. So fashion is not a problem at all as a lot of other things, if ethically uh, accorded with myself. And it was this way. And we let work a lot of artisan and craft that were almost losing their uh, family run, uh, uh, company, so it, it was a good way to invest your money and uh, the, a big brand money in order to provide uh, a continuity. Uh, so there were a lot of reasons why I accepted that, but the, the crucial one was that I could show and relate to people that maybe were, again, like my participants, very far from our systems that they are not affectionate to, to art or whatever, they maybe they don't go to museum and how I could dialogue with that. It's not so obvious to make something that can work also in that kind of environment. But I was speaking of people to people. So the feminist instance that I carry on and I work with. So I, I, it was just me, but with a wider, uh, uh, on a wider stage and it's incredible how many people can relate to things that are completely new for them but they can find uh, intriguing to understand more i think that this is interesting for us to to cross boundaries and to understand how we can at the end i want just to meet people 